Good morning and welcome. Um, to all of you who said it was too cold in the sanctuary last week, you're welcome. All right, I hope that you're nice and comfortable this morning. Sermons, sermon today is on hell. Um, our, our Lord is arisen and present and it is glorious. Join me in worshiping our risen Lord. to be in God's house and this wonderful song says we've a story to tell to our neighbors to our friends to our community and to the nation shall we stand together
If you have your Bible, turn to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verses 37 through 47. <clears throat> By the way, while you're turning there, happy Mother's Day. At, at my first church, a little, little tiny church out in the country, Troy United Methodist Church, they had a tradition where we would have all the mothers stand up and then we would keep counting up in age until we got to the oldest mother. Um, I've got some good news for you. We're not going to do that. Um, I always wondered, what is the honor in being the oldest mother in the building? Um, I mean, it's, it's great that you're, yeah, you know, any, any, any. Um, anyway. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off. For all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to breaking of bread and prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their numbers daily those who were being saved. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. I would like for all the thieves present to raise their hands. No one. When I was 10 years old, my parents sent me to Citadel Summer Camp. It was a month long, and I was 10. I wrote them the old-fashioned way, because that's the only option I had at the time, a letter and mailed it. Come get me. They did not. So I thought, what can I do to get sent home? So I went into the gift shop, and I picked up a Snickers bar, which is my favorite candy bar. And I put it in my pocket right in front of the cashier, and I walked out. And I thought, surely here at Citadel Summer Camp, a place of honor, a place of, you know, a cadet does not lie, cheat, or steal, or tolerate those who do. Surely here, this will get me sent home. And apparently the cashier thought I was hungry or something because she just, she just let me walk on by. Do you know what that makes me, though? A thief. I wouldn't take anything now that's not mine. Quite frankly, I didn't even really want the Snickers bar. I certainly had the money. What was it, 20 cents at that time? I wanted to go home. But taking something that's not yours qualifies you as a thief. Now I'll ask the question differently. Everyone here who has never stolen anything, raise your hand. 
we got one sweet little girl back there in the back <laughs> who's either not old enough to have taken something that wasn't hers or she's not telling the truth. <laughs> she looks very sweet, though. I don't think she's taking anything. Isn't it amazing how we go from, will all the thieves please raise your hand, and no one raises their hand, to everyone who has never stolen anything raise your hand, and no one raises your hand. We went from no one here is a thief to everyone but that sweet little girl and maybe her older brother. He looks a little shifty. Uh, <laughs> that we have all, at one time or another, taken something that wasn't ours. This is how God views the world. You either have sinned or you have not. We view ourselves as good people. That is demonstrated by the fact that when I ask, would all the thieves present raise their hand, no one raises their hand because we perceive ourselves to be good. But when we really dig into that, we're not as good as we thought we were. Maybe we're good today so far, but we all have a past. We all have mistakes. We all have sins. I see in today's passages something that we, that we desperately need. You know, verse 37 says, when the people heard this, when they were cut to the heart. I've always felt that you shouldn't start a, a, a scripture passage with something that's referring to what's ahead of it, without at least the touching on what it was. They were cut to the heart. Why? What did they hear that had cut them to the heart? Well, you don't even have to read the whole chapter ahead. You only have to read the previous verse, verse 36. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified. He was not saying you Jews crucified him. He's saying your sin crucified him. Until we come to the realization that we crucified Jesus, I'm not sure we've really experienced grace. Many of us come to church and we think of ourselves as holy and, and good, and compared to the world, we are. But we must understand that it was our sin. It was my Snickers bar eons ago. It's all the times that we've thought the dishonest thing. It's all the times that we've done the dishonest thing, and it's a lifetime of it. We, don't make any mistake, we crucified Jesus. Our sin is what he had to die for. You are not a good person. I am not a good person. Good compared to the rest of the world? Maybe. A miserable sinner compared to Jesus Christ. Now, I don't want you feeling bad about yourself. If it helps, it's the best church I've ever served. You people are wonderful compared to those last yahoos that I was the pastor for. But that means nothing in eternity. It means nothing when we stand before our God. I 
I was told in seminary that when preaching, to always use we and us when being accusatory. In other words, we are sinners. The sin of the world affects all of us. And it does. And I am a sinner just like the rest. But I want to make sure that you understand that it was you, the individual you sitting here, you and me. It was your sin that caused Jesus to die. There is but one proper response to that. And that is to fall on our face before our God and ask his forgiveness. Because that's what he died for. Not for us to compare ourselves to other people who are worse than we are. but to fall before him and be cleansed. I am very concerned for today's church. I'm very concerned for today's Methodist church. I'm very concerned for the church of Christ as a whole, the body of Christ. We've largely stopped talking about sin. Do you know why? It's not popular. Oh, it's popular to sin. (laughs) But it's not popular to talk about sin. Or worse yet, we call good evil, and we call evil good. I'm concerned about today's church that tells people You are good just like you are. Come to Jesus and don't change at all. With no mention of the need for repentance. What did Peter tell people? Repent and be baptized. I'm also very concerned for the people who are preaching that you don't need to change at all. Now, does God love you as you are? Absolutely he does. Does he call you just as you are? Yes, he does. Does he ask you not to change once you have come to him? No, he does not. Listen to Matthew chapter uh, chapter 5, verse 19. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands... Now, keep in mind, Matthew is... The New Testament doesn't exist yet. Matthew is writing the New Testament, part, at least his part of it, as we're reading it. And he says, anyone who sets aside at the, one of the least of these commands, talking about the Old Testament, and teaches others accordingly, will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Listen carefully and let me be clear. Anyone who tells you that your sins are too great to come to Jesus is a liar. There is nothing that you have ever done that cannot be and will not be forgiven by Jesus Christ. Conversely, anyone who tells you that you can come to Jesus and remain in a relationship with him without repenting of your sin is also a liar. Brothers, what shall we do, the scripture said. Their hearts were were wrenched. What shall we do? Repent and be baptized. Isn't it interesting that the message from Peter, once he's filled with the Holy Spirit, once Jesus has been crucified, dead, buried, and resurrected from the dead, the message that Jesus, I mean, that Peter preaches full of the Holy Spirit is the same message that John the Baptist was preaching before Jesus even started his ministry. Repent and be baptized.
Now, you don't need to repent and be baptized again. But you do need to repent. With many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Today, I beg you the same. Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Peter was not speaking of some abstract theory about sin or judgment. He begins with very specific, concrete awareness that this present generation is headed for disaster. But Jesus stands in the way and can stop them from falling off a cliff. So the message is clear. You're on your way off a cliff. Jesus can help you. Turn to him. That is the message. That is all of the gospel. That is the good news. We can repent and be forgiven by Jesus Christ. And every one of us is a sinner. And every one of us who have come to Christ, as we live, we, we have a tendency to kind of drift. And we need moments when we reset and repent. I believe this is one of those moments. Sometimes we just go through life without thinking about some things. I, I watched a video um, this past week of a preacher who was interviewing people on the street, and he interviewed this guy who was an atheist. And uh, the preacher said, do you believe in God? He said, nope, I don't believe there is a blankety-blank God. And, and, you can, and, and instead of the preacher being offended, he's like, oh, I found one. <laughs> and he starts talking to him about God, and he says, why don't you believe in God? He says, because there's not one. Well, what if I could prove to you by, that the Bible is God's Word? Well, first of all, there's no God, so they can't be God's Word. Let me quote a few passage to you, passages to you, and you tell me what you think about them. I'm not going to listen to that because it's hogwash. Then the preacher said, if I told you I had the fastest car in the world... Would you want to see it? And the guy said, of course I would. So then why is it when I tell you that the Bible is God's holy word and I try to show you how it is, you're not interested? Are you afraid that I'm going to prove to you that there is a God? Or do you simply not want to know if there is a God? And you could tell the man is working through this thought process. He had not been challenged up to that point to actually work through all of those thoughts. We, even as Christians, we get stuck in a rut. And the Holy Spirit has to pull us out of that rut. Repent from your rut. By the way, Dick, come over here. I want to stand here and look at this. I want you to look out of the congregation when I ask this question. Raise your hand if you're a thief. We got the most we got the most thieving congregation in the United Methodist Church. <laughs> We're number one at something. <laughs> Repent. Let's pray. Holy God, you are gracious and wonderful, and we are thankful. We're thankful that you love us and you care for us, even while we are sinners. We have all fallen short of your grace and of, 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 of what we're supposed to be. Forgive us. Guide us with your Holy Spirit as we repent. 
as we reset. And we thank you and we give glory to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Truly daily, we need to ask God for forgiveness and ask for his grace and mercy to be upon us. And we also need to remember that Satan, I think, a lot of times goes the other direction and tries to keep us from telling other people about Jesus Christ because we feel unworthy. We feel knowing that we have sin in our own lives and we feel like we can't go and tell the world about Jesus. Well, we can. We need to know that God has forgiven us, that God loves us, and he wants us to go make all disciples. Shall we stand together as we sing? Using the words of the Apostles' Creed, we join together as God's church and affirm what we do believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. The ushers will receive the morning offering. your own. <laughs> God, as we give this morning, make our hearts joyful. To give to you is a blessing. So accept your tithes and our offerings. Amen. Amazing grace, how 
sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing The Lord has promised good to me, His word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be, as long as life endures. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The earth shall soon dissolve. Like snow, the sun forbear to shine. But God, who called me here below, will be forever mine. Will be forever. preaching and Conway singing us the Belangia family, family Hour this morning. <laughs> you were the better of the two. <laughs> That's our secret, okay? 
I'll tell him as soon as I see him. As we go to prayer time this morning, a couple, uh, hopefully you've got your prayer list out of the bulletin. A couple of names uh, or situations to update you on. Uh, Charles Gray is the husband of Kathy Oakley's niece and has had a reoccurrence of cancer and will begin chemo on Tuesday. Uh, Elgardo Presley has been on our prayer list for several weeks now and he was placed back in the hospital uh, this week. And so please remember the Presley family. And that's, that's the newest ones as we worship this morning. This is Mother's Day, and we honor our mothers. God has chosen you to be special ladies. And so we pray God's deepest blessing upon you as you perform his calling upon your family. Husbands of those mothers, you know your responsibility today. That's to gather around the table and eat the food that she's prepared. <laughs> no. <laughs> Did you say ouch? <laughs> it's not in your house. All right, that's good. We got All right. But we do pray a blessing upon you this morning. It's your time of prayer. As always, this altar is now open for prayer. And you may come forward, kneel, and speak to God. And then after a moment, I'll close us out. Father, there are so many things on our hearts this morning. As we're confronted with the gospel that calls us, God, search our hearts. 
Speak truth through your Holy Spirit into us. Send us, God, to a world that needs to hear good news. As we pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. If I have any kids, y'all can go ahead and come up. You can sit right there. You can sit on the ground. If you're more comfortable up there, you can totally sit there. Good morning. I hope you're all treating your mamas right today. Yeah? All right, good. Okay. I have a couple of, um, of signs to show you real quick. Hey, what's up? Hey. All right, I've got some uh, street signs to show you real quick. I want you to tell me what they mean. Stop. Stop. It's a stop sign. So what does this mean? Stop. To stop, right? All right. Will this sign ever mean anything other than stop? No. No. No, it won't mean anything other than stop. Um, what happens if you don't obey this sign? You'll get hit by a car. You could get hit by a car or you could hit another car, right? It's not safe. So that rule is put in place to keep you and to keep others safe, right? And so if we don't follow it, we, we could really hurt ourselves. All right. One more. This isn't really like a street sign. What is this? Does anybody know? A person. Yes, so the fancy word is a crossing guard, right? So you see these a lot at schools, and you see it at construction zones, right? Somebody's standing there with a stop sign, and so when he holds the stop sign up, what does it mean to do? Stop. stop. Will it ever mean anything other than stop? What happens if you disobey? You could get hit or you could hit somebody or something, right? Yeah, you could hurt somebody. You could hurt somebody else or you can hurt yourself. Now, if the crossing guard is telling you to do something, you should listen, right? If the crossing guard is doing this and holding up the stop sign, does that mean anything different? No, no it will always mean stop, right? So in a similar way, did you know that God and God's word does the same thing? When God tells us something, right, God gave us the whole Bible, so when God tells us something, do you think we should listen? Do you think his word ever changes? No, so just like the stop sign, when the stop sign tells us to stop, it, it will never change to mean something else. God's word is the same. Now let me tell you, let me give you, let me give you a couple verses. Are you ready? Do not, be, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So this is saying we don't need to be like the world around us, right? We need to listen to what the Bible says. We need to, we need to follow what the Bible says. This God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord proves true. He's a shield for all those who take refuge in him. So the word of God is true, right? And it's a shield, right? Just like the stop sign, when we follow and obey those rules, they help, they help keep us safe, and that's the same thing that the Bible does. The Bible, when if, if we obey the Bible, we're following God's law, and it keeps us safe, right? All right, and then this last one I'm going to leave you with. All Scripture is God-breathed. What does that mean, God-breathed? When I say God-breathed, that means that God gave us the Word. So God spoke the Word to us, and he used men to write it down, but God gave us all of his words. So all scriptures God breathes and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So will the stop sign ever change meaning? Will the Bible ever change its meaning? Never.
It's going to be true forever and always. So I want you to think about that this morning. Let's pray together. Let's pray that God will just help us hide his word in our hearts so we can remember how true and amazing and wonderful and how much of a treasure it truly is. All right, so let's pray together. Dear God, we just thank you that you have given us your word, God. God, you have spoken it to us, and in it we have everything that we need. God, you, you lay out guidelines, you lay out what seems to be rules and regulations, but God, when we really think about it, it shows us the way that we need to live so that we're protected. So God, we just pray that you help us hide your word in our hearts so we know we know what we're supposed to do. God, we love you and we praise you. And it's in your precious name we pray, amen. So I have a treat, take one. Make sure you ask your grown-up before you eat it, okay? Thank you, Maddie. Uh, good morning. We just have a few announcements for you all today. So in a few weeks on May 22nd, we're going to be re recognizing our graduating seniors here at the 845 traditional service. So if you have a graduate that you'd like to recognize, please let me know as soon as possible so we can prepare for that and recognize them accordingly. Um, and you can also send us some uh, college grad info as well, and we'll announce that in the bulletin. Also, speaking of seniors, the senior adults are taking a trip to Strawberry Hill on Thursday, May 19th. This is going to be from 9.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. So please register on Realm, or you can contact Michael Norris if you're interested in coming to that. Also, date night is coming back. Uh, this is going to be Saturday, May 21st from 5.30 to 9 p.m. And we can watch your kids from infants to 10 years old while you go out and enjoy an evening with your boo. Uh, so please register on Realm or contact Angie Smith by May 14th if you'd like to participate in date night. And lastly, the backpack ministry is continuing to collect items. Um, anything that y'all are able to donate uh, is much appreciated. You can drop that off back in our wooden mission boxes back in the sunroom. So thank you so much. We have our Kids Pop Choir, and as they're coming in and get, getting in place, uh, this is our Kid Pop Junior Choir. We're excited that they're going to sing for us. I'd like to have all our mothers to please stand so we can acknowledge uh, you, uh, seeing you actually stand. If y'all would stand in the auditorium and let us see how many mothers we have with us this morning. I know a mother is, we can't be without a mother, a wonderful mother. I, I know I had a wonderful mother. I have a wife that's a wonderful mother and it means the world. So let's give these ladies a big round of applause this morning. Thank you, maybe seated. Yeah, they've been having, uh, we've had up to like 18, I think it is, kids on Wednesday nights, a little smaller group singing this morning. I think a few more are gonna show up for, uh, when they go over for the next service, but uh, it's such a joy. Chad and them do such a wonderful job, and thank you so much.
Amen. Well, we appreciate them singing for us today. That's always a joy uh, to have the children. Let's stand together as we uh, dismiss with our last song today. It's called Rescue the Perishing. Shall we stand? Last few weeks we've been talking about being sent, about God calling us. My heart is heavy this morning as I read the news and our nation is fracturing. There is an answer, and the answer is Jesus. But who will tell them? Who will be sent? Us. There's a dying world that needs us. God is misrepresented many times in our world today. False truth is abundant. Scripture is quoted out of context, out of meaning. Who will be sent to speak truth? us. We're going to close the service like we have been reading this scripture from Matthew 9. I'm going to be bold this morning. I should be bold every Sunday. This scripture is asking God, the Lord of the harvest, to send workers into the field. If you're not willing, then I'm going to ask you not to read this. Because this is a promise. This is a plea from us to God to send us out. Don't be scared. You heard a sermon this morning that talked about the power of the Holy Spirit that will come upon you if you're willing. I'm not trying to guilt you into anything. 
But if you're willing to be sent by God, please join me. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers. God, we're yours. Send us. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.